we're playing on the continent of Caminos. Caminos is, it's an island continent, so it's surrounded by water. And it's far away, as far as you know, it's far away from any other continents. Uh, the people, the different kinds of, of peoples of Caminos, including the different monsters and species of humanoid races and anthropomorphic races, um, they all seem to have converged in this place. It's a very strange blend of peoples. You guys are actually from the, the southern side of the island. And the southern side of the island has a chain of mountains and a huge freshwater lake. It is possible to travel by sea, but that there are great dangers. And because of that, most ships do not travel much further than a mile off of the shore of the coast. And that's only for like fishing and you know trade and stuff. But even that can be perilous. Like there are many stories of like fishing ships just going missing, right? And like debris floating up and nobody really knows what happened. So the land is a wild and dangerous land. This continent does not have that many settlements. This continent does not have many cities or even villages because it is um, populated in large part by creatures and monsters that are fierce, dangerous, the stuff of legend and myth even. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Florian Meadow. I'm, I'm a satyr monk. I got big tree arms when I want to have them. And I'm, I'm a big fan of basket weaver. Uh, hi, I'm Linifred Birch. And remember folks, it all starts with the eyes. I am Occam, I am a lean and barbarian, and I, I'm kind of lost. I have a ghost chasing me, I think, and I don't like it. Uh, I am playing Lark, a, uh, well, yeah. human. A human. <laughs> a human. Yeah, sure. You see a small, boy with kind of orange, very tan skin. He would look like a Kamina boy, like a human boy, except he seems to be emanating some smoke and his hair doesn't seem to be hair. It seems to be almost like burning embers. And you see him kind of standing in an alleyway, um, kind of watching what's going around, like what's going on. Nobody seems to notice him, but he sees you, and you see kind of a look in his eyes, like as if he's seen the three of you and you've seen him, and now he knows that you've seen him. The boy looks at you, and, and he starts speaking at you. Um, what languages do you speak? Common, Leonin, and Sylvan. What? Uh, uh. He points, you see he points behind, and he points towards the north end of the city, which which literally goes into the mountains, and he points like, keeps pointing up to like the peaks above the city. And he says, Ashteta Mususka. And he starts pantomiming for you, and he's, he's flapping his arms, and he says, Zmai. Am I there? And he there? points to his hair. You, all right, so you guys are still like 30 feet away. <laughs> okay. You, you see your Leonin friend like trying to have a conversation, and you see the boy begin kind of like pantomiming. Why is he harassing that oh, child? Oh, dear Lord, is this boy on fire? You see that the boy, when he's pantomiming at one point, and he does, the, the, he does this with his arms, and he goes, oh. And he, you hear him say this, right? But as he does it, there's, you feel heat as he blows out from his mouth. And there's like a little bit of a, a sulfur kind of burning smell too. And then he points back at the mountain. He says, Zmai. Zmai. <sighs> okay, well, to my, the best of my understanding, what he's trying to communicate is that there's a dragon at the top of the mountain. <sighs> It's my, it's my. I'm casting comprehend languages. <laughs> casting it or ritual I'm casting, casting it? it for I'm 10 so minutes. done with this kid. <laughs> okay. You, 
you feel like if you just concentrate hard enough, the mm -hmm. gods will bless you with the knowledge to understand this boy. Mm -hmm. And within moments, all of a sudden, his words, he's like, It will fly down to the city from over the mountain in three days. Zmai is coming. The great red dragon, he comes. Well, hmm. from what I know, there's a dragon called Zmai. Zmai, I think, is going to come down and kill everyone in three days, or it's a kid being dumb. They do that a lot, so I don't know. He says, he, he says, you understanding my words? For like ten minutes, yeah. He doesn't understand you back. <laughs> so, how, how do you convey this? I know. He says, ah. He says, you, you telling the the Stratos, you tell these Stratos, and he points to your friend, who is a Leonin, yeah. but yeah. who is not a ranking member of the Stratos. Yeah. He says, you telling Stratos warning? Uh-huh, yep, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Great red dragon uh -huh. awakened from volcano by the lake, he coming. Uh-huh, yeah. You telling Stratos this? Uh-huh, yeah. There's a dragon, it's gonna kill everybody. Mm-hmm, yep. You're the guards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me? Yep. You've been promoted. Good job. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh no. Um so I'm I'm not a guard. I know. Should we take him to the to the I don't know. I, just, I mean But I could find one fast enough. I mean you could, you're tall. I mean they're pretty big. They're easy to find. I'm gonna turn around, he's gonna cut both his hands around us. Hey! Uh, Stratos, help! <laughs> so you you get the attention of a trio of Stratos who who like march Leonin? over towards you, and all three of them are Leonin. All okay. three of them are wearing armor, the armor of the Stratos, uh, and and all three of them you they they seem like soldiers, not captains. Um, they come over, they all have the shields and the spears that you are familiar with, and one of them says, "What seems to be the problem, brother?" Uh. This kid says there's a dragon coming. He looks at the kid. Zamai, I think it was. He says, so uh, okay. he says, I do not speak the, their tongue, but. Neither. But we, we know of one who can. A short time later, you arrive at the first of three gates of the castle. The exterior gate um, that you have no problem passing through as the Stratos lead the way. Um, you get to the second gate, past a row of barracks and training yards, to the middle yards, uh, and you see a series of buildings. And one of these buildings is like a two-story solid stone building, and it looks very old and very well supported. Like, these are not like small bricks, these are big, massive stones. And it looks like they've taken some hits, you know what I mean, like there, there are some stones that are cracked from obvious like damage, not just weathering, um, and some that have been replaced. And the 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 one Stratos that was kind of leading the patrol goes up and knocks on the door. And a few moments later, uh, the door opens, and you see standing in the doorway is a turtle. And the turtle looks at the Stratos and he says, "Yes, what is it?" And the Stratos says, "We found this boy." He is a fire genasi, but we do not understand his tongue, Master. He is said to have a warning, and he points and he says, This satyr can understand him, but does not speak their tongue. And and you notice that like the turtle like does this slow look. He's like Ha Interesting. Well bring them in. Moments later, after some page flipping and reading, the old turtle begins muttering under his breath. And this takes another 30 seconds. And then he begins speaking. And what it sounds like to you guys is common. Like he's just speaking the, the, the tongue of Kamina. And, and he says, tell me, boy, what warnings do you have for us? And after speaking to the boy, it is revealed that the boy comes from a people 
who live in a solitary volcanic peak in a mountain that had been dormant, dormant for centuries. Their people lived within the warmth of this volcano, but that three nights ago, the volcano awoke, and with it awoke a red dragon who had slumbered beneath the mountain for as long as his people could remember. And this is not a wormling. This is not a young adult red dragon. This is an adult red dragon, and it has a name, and its name is Zmai. I am Votano. I am sure when he, he says, please come, come into my home. You see, as I described, shelves of, you know, uh, dried herbs, powdered spices and herbs. You see like wooden tables with stuff. You see things hanging from the rafters. It's just, it's just jam packed with all sorts of, of items. He says, so I take it that you are going to uh, engage uh, in this offer that I have made Winnie for acquiring some necessary components. So you kind of pull away and you see a single tree and it's, um, it is dead. And there's like a big crack and a burn mark down the middle of the trunk as if maybe perhaps it was like hit by lightning kind of thing, right? And this single tree has a, a whole bunch of the yellow flowers growing at the base of it. And you see um, a, a skeletal corpse, like not full bleach skeleton, but like basically like a desiccated corpse that looks like it's been dead for a really long time. And it has the tattered remnants of some armor. And there's like a bag, like a backpack and a belt with pouches and a rope and a grappling hook. And there's like a walking stick and, and uh, a, he has a sword and he's, le he's like dead and leaned up against the tree. And some of the yellow flowers are actually growing out of this corpse's body. Frame of this creature, are they? You would judge that this as a human, like okay. a Camino. Like, and, and they, based on the what's left of the corpse's features, it appears to be like a, a, a male, you're not sure what age, but an adult male human. Take the butt of my ax. Yes. This, this is a corpse and that how general amount of time they've been here it looks desiccated uh like dried out okay so maybe a season okay you feel like it's been a season since since this has been here he'll try to plunge the butt of his the butt of yeah, his axe into like the abdominal chest area of the corpse um do i break through So not the sharp part, but no. just boom. I'm trying right? to like get a hole and then a okay. So leverage boom, point. You pop through it. It it punctures. Um, the butt of your axe is a little gooey. Let's say. Seems like whatever was rotting inside of there stayed stayed sort of damp and maybe okay. fertile for the plants to grow in, while the exterior husk of this corpse was sort of desiccated. Um, and now roll initiative. <laughs> Don't worry, he has disadvantage. Bad, bad monkey. <laughs> oh, the most disadvantageous. You win Ooh. against the ever so slowly moving zombie type undead creature that maybe isn't undead. Ooh, bad mummy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna um, rage. Here's what happens. Okay. It, it's not instantaneous, right? You're, you're like, hmm. Boop. You pop it, nothing happens. You pull your axe out, you're looking at the bottom, and then it's like, and it lurches up towards you. You 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 take the sword and you just lunge down, it goes through its eye and comes out its skull, and it's stuck into the ground, and it, its arms flail like this, and then fall limp. Is this sword well made? It is. Now, you are, you are familiar with 
various types mm -hmm. of weaponry from from stone and bone primitive weapons through you know iron this you recognize that this is steel this is like castle forged steel this is a high quality blade i had checked out uh spothy's forge previously you know the mark of spothy this is not okay you've seen that mark but this does not have any mark on it, but the, the craftsmanship is, you are certain that this is a Castle Forge longsword. Roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> don't Google it. Quarry. No, I don't. No. Don't just. Roll initiative. Yep. Uh, it's you know. time to you roll did this initiative. To me. <laughs> No. So here's what you see. Mm -hmm. What you see is a small humanoid creature with two legs and four arms. Its body is hairless, but its face looks mm, very much like a malicious evil primate. It has large eyes, as if maybe it was more inclined to be nocturnal. And it has a really big mouth with enormous, ridiculous, oversized pointy teeth, like two rows, like shark teeth. Drop bear. It is climbing down, upside down towards you, and it's like, <laughs> and it jumps at you. <laughs> cool guy. All right, one of them pokes its head out, and it looks just like the other ones that you just, like, spelled. And and it, 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 like, looks at you, and then it grabs the arm, and then it goes back in the bushes, and it eats it. It allow it like you notice when you reach your hand out, it's like ah, and it's it's got like uh, like intestines hanging out of its mouth, but it, you do it very slowly and you like maintain eye contact with it, and you touch its head, and it, it after it realizes that you're not hurting it, it's it like stops growling at you and it it goes back to chewing the intestines. Why? He's my friend. Yeah, it's that's disgusting. It's my hunting partner. It's cute. What oh. do you mean? Look at him with his little eyes and his arms. Oh, He's the brains, I'm the brawn. <laughs> I love the it. The specter looks at you and, and it, it kind of wipes some of the goo from its mouth and then it, it takes some of the intestines out and hands it to you in a gesture of friendship. <gasps> Well, hello, and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy the Wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button, and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you were just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye. <laughs>